fries, cookies, cheeseburgers, milkshakes. Did any of those make your mouth water? Then you might have a food addiction that isn't so different from drugs and alcohol. Processed foods might be rewiring our brain and providing compulsive behavior that reinforces the need for more. Cotton candy bits and powdered sugar. Is there any way that you could do all? But do processed foods truly have the ability to create a mood altering effect? There's arguments in favor of food addiction that suggests that if carbohydrates and fats are mixed together in unnaturally large dosages, this creates a rapid delivery system for nutrients that results in a psychological effect on the brain's reward system that resembles those produced by, you know, cocaine and nicotine. The overconsumption of sugar dense foods or beverages is initially motivated by the pleasure of sweet taste and is often compared to drug addiction. What are you doing? What did you put in the sugar? It's so good. Fructose is found in high fructose corn syrup, a type of sugar known as a monosaccharide, which is a simple sugar and serves as the building block of carbohydrates. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. So bear with me. It's also known as a fruit sugar and it occurs naturally in other plants like sugar beets, sugar cane, and vegetables, which makes fructose sound really innocent right now. What's so bad about corn syrup? Corn's a fruit. Syrup comes from a bush. Oh boy. Although fructose is in high fructose corn syrup, duh, the crystalline fructose should not be confused with high fructose corn syrup, which is what's in all of our addicted junk foods. It is considered a natural sugar when it's consumed directly from whole plant foods. It's considered an added sugar when we consume it in forms of packaged foods and beverages, to which fructose containing sugars like crystalline fructose and high fructose corn syrup or sucrose have been added during manufacturing. All right, I know that was a lot, but remember, naturally occurring fructose, good. Added fructose, now that we know there's a good fructose and a bad fructose, what is my body doing when I'm digesting this? Fructose is actually handled differently by your body than other sugars. Most of the fructose we consume is metabolized by the liver, where it's converted into an energy source for the body through a process that does not require insulin. And for me, this is concerning because insulin helps your blood sugar enter the body cells so it can be used for energy. And fructose isn't even being used by our body to help it. 20% of adults are addicted to food, but we aren't just talking about cookies and chips here. I'm also talking to you about soda, pop, coke, whatever you call it. How many of you go through a box a week? How many of you need to have a soda in the morning, afternoon, and evening? Look at the side of the box. What's in your soda? High fructose corn syrup. Now what happens if you go cold turkey on not having that soda? Maybe you're a little cranky. Maybe you feel like you need that sugar. That's addiction. Something that's designed by food scientists in a laboratory to look a certain way, feel a certain way, and smell a certain way when you open the package is not natural. People are over here losing their mind because of beans and rice. It's just beans and rice. Your mouth doesn't water for beans and rice. Early research on rats suggests that the sucrose is helping keep animals hooked. They want more and more and more each day and they'll show signs of craving. Kind of like how you start with one soda a day and somehow end up drinking three or four a day. Now, sugars are natural and present in many foods, like I mentioned previously, from bananas to beets. But all about the packaging. A piece of fruit has the appropriate amount of sugar in it based on how much fiber it contains. Also has other nutrients that are gonna minimize or mitigate the effects that sugar might have on your brain. What matters is the dosage and the speed of absorption of the substance. Most people don't consume pure ethanol, but opt for a wine or a beer, which contains a small amount of the additive substance. But when it comes to ultra processed snacks, Sugar is often mixed with a fat. Corn syrup is only eight grams of fat. Per serving, a bar is four servings. This combination makes food even more efficient at activating the stratum, which is a part of the brain's reward center. A 2023 study assigned 82 people to snack on either high fat, high sugar yogurt, or low sugar, low fat yogurt for eight weeks. The scientists discovered not only that the first group's preference for a healthier yogurt decreased because they were used to getting tons of sugar, but after the trial, their brain activity patterns changed too. It had fat in it, it's not good for you. I don't care! When they tasted the fatty, sugary milkshakes, those who had been indulged in the high sugar, high fat snacks had an increased response to their reward circuit. The ultra processed foods are hijacking our brain in ways that you'd actually see it with drugs. It all comes down to the release of dopamine. Well, people seem to enjoy them. Look how happy everybody is.
the potency of fatty sugar treats triggered the release. The results showed that indulging in something like a milkshake leads to a significant release of dopamine in healthy people that can be about one third of what's usually seen with amphetamines, which is a group of highly addictive stimulant drugs such as speed. When researchers showed pictures of cocaine to drug addicts and photographs of donuts to healthy people, the same brain regions lit up the exact same in both groups. Both illegal drugs and processed foods can induce cravings in the same reward areas of the brain. Withdrawal symptoms are another classic feature of addiction, which seem to be present in connection with ultra processed foods as well. I don't need it. I don't need it. While it's unlikely that anyone has ever experienced the physical shakes from quitting cookies, um, nom, 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 nom. Oh. the parents who actually attempt to restrict their child's intake of sugar sweetened drinks have reported symptoms such as headaches, irritability, social withdrawalness in their kids. Yikes. Similarly, adolescents instructed to abstain from high intakes of sodas for three days complained of decreased motivation and the ability to concentrate. Sounds like me after I haven't had coffee for a couple days. With all this information, let's think about nicotine products. When they became popular, like cigarettes and chewing tobacco, they were not clear-cut candidates for being addictive substances. They lacked significant mind-altering effects, and the tobacco industry heavily denied any evidence of them being addictive in nature. Yes, according to this survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Considering ultra-processed foods detrimental health effects, could this be cigarettes all over again, but with our food? <laughs>